Tamil Nadu Mercantile Bank Limited Q1 FY24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on a touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. This conference call may contain forward-looking statements about the company, which are based on the beliefs, opinions, and expectations of the company as on date of this call. These statements are not the guarantee of future performance and involve risks and uncertainties that are difficult to predict. I now hand the conference over to Mr. S. Krishnan, MD and CEO, Tamil Nadu Mercantile Bank Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are warm welcome to all panelists, investors and stakeholders joining us today. A very good morning. I hope this message finds you all in good health and spirits. I am pleased to present the financial results and performance highlights of Tamil Nadu Mercantile Bank for the first quarter of the fiscal 2024. Before delving into the details, I would like to express my sincere gratitude for all your continuous support and trust in TMB. The first quarter of the fiscal 2324 has been encouraging with the bank continuing its legacy of consistently delivering positive results since its inception more than 100 years ago. We have been steadfast in our commitment in generating profits and rewarding our shareholders suitably. Let's get straight into the highlights of the performance of the bank for the Q1 of the fiscal 2024. The performance details, the PowerPoint presentation to the investors, have already been uploaded in the website of both the stock exchanges and also the site of our bank. Nevertheless, I will give a brief on the performance of the bank for the ready information of my analyst friends. The total deposits of the bank grew by 8.73% year on year, while the advances grew by 10.26%. Within the advances, if we look into the RAM segment has grown by about 12.86%. The total overall business grew by 9.4%. The bank's profitability has also increased. The bank registered an increase of about 12% in the net profit compared with the year-on-year, -year, registering a net profit of 261 crore. The non-interest income, again, uh, registered a growth of 20% about uh, when well, compared with the previous uh, year's uh, first quarter, we used to an amount of rupees 167 crore during the current year, first quarter. Similarly, the interest income has also uh, increased by 15% compared to the previous year, reaching an amount of rupees 1156 crore during the first quarter. When I look into the parameters which uh, directly has on the, will have the interest for the stakeholders, the net worth has increased to 7,190 crore as on 30th of June 2023 from 5,427 crore. The book value of the share has gone up to 500, sorry, 454.03 from 380.87 crore. The asset quality, when we look into the asset quality, the NPA has come down to 1.56 percentage, the grass NPA from 1.69 a year ago, and the net NPA has also come down to 0.66 percentage. The bank's return on assets uh, is 1.85 percentage, and the return on equity stands at 14.80, with a very strong capital adequacy of 26.57 percentage, of which the CET1 alone is about 24.94 percentage. The cost income ratio is at 44.22 percent. Now, uh, let me also touch upon some of the guidance what we gave uh, to the street at the beginning of the year, and almost we are uh, more or less on the same line. As far as the NIM is concerned, we will be we said that 
we will be fourth class and we are fourth percent in uh, NIM as on 30th of June. The ROA, we gave you a band of 1.75% to 2%. We are at 1.85%. ROE, we said uh, 15 plus. We are close to that at 14.8. And uh, loss NPA, net NPA, we said below 2 and 1% respectively. We have honored that with 1.56 and 0.66. The provision coverage ratio, we said uh, uh, the band of 88% to 90%, we are 90 plus. The cost income ratio, we said 42 to 44%. Almost we are on the band with 44.22%. The credit cost, uh, we said about uh, the band of 0.5 to 0.75. The credit cost is at 0.5 percentage. The slippage ratio was set as less than 1% by us. The slippage ratio for the Q1 is a 0.27, which translates to for a year almost to 1%. Uh, friends, I will stop here for the brevity in as much as the PowerPoint presentation in detail and uh, you being on the, the analyst, you, you might have definitely made a good analysis. I will now uh, throw the floor open to all the analysts for an interaction. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of Lakshmi Narayan from Tunga Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good morning, sir. Um, Very good morning, Mr. Narayan, sir. Yeah, so a couple of questions. Sir, uh, first is, uh, if you look at uh, the yield across uh, retail, agri, MSME, and corporate, right? Can you just give me a range of yield across uh, these four different uh, classes? Uh, which one you need yield in on retail uh, on the ramp yeah, segment? Yeah, yeah. No, retail, agri, MSME separately, and the uh, corporate. Okay. I have noted, sir. We will share with you. Okay. Uh, so second is that um, uh, uh, if you look at uh, the top 20 borrowers, right? Um, uh, how much is top 20 borrowers contributing uh, from uh, from the assets base? One bridge. Uh, Mr. Simon, sir, I will uh, give during the course of this. Okay. So, and coming to the uh, MSME segment, right, and if I again further divide that into the, the micro, small, and the medium, right, um, in which segment uh, you, you are seeing uh, growth is uh, lower uh, comparatively, and in which segment you find that uh, there is uh, the building up of stress, if you think? Uh, I can give the growth uh, in this uh, MSME breakup. Uh, micro uh, year on year has grown by 1.34 percentage. QOQ it is by 1.42 percentage. Small has grown by 27.79 uh, percentage year on year, and uh, QOQ is almost flat or uh, slightly lower. The medium sector has grown by 6.54 percent year on year, and uh, the QOQ is almost flat. Sorry, medium. I, I'm sorry. That is the total of MSME. What I said. The medium is uh, has a degrowth, 
by about 4.57 percentage year on year and about 6 percentage uh, QOQ. Of course, the base is uh, small. The medium base is only 860 crores as on 30th of uh, June. The overall MSME has grown by about 5.74 percentage year on year. Got it. So the, 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 my, the smallest one, which has grown 1.34%, what is the uh, closing value in terms of the asset size? Can you be a little louder, if you don't mind? So the, 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 the smallest, I mean, the, the growth that is 1.34% you mentioned in terms of micro, right? What is the total uh, gross assets there? Asset size is 9,500 crore. Okay, okay. Now, um, uh, so the growth has come from um, um, uh, from predominantly in the in the middle segment, right? And and uh, uh, it has been flat uh, flat at one percent plus in the first segment. Now, is it is it because the of the uh, the system is not growing, or is it because of uh, competitive intensity, or is it that you choose not to grow because you think that it stresses building up, or what what is the what is the reason you would say attribute for these things? I will only say that as far as the MSME is concerned, which I have told earlier also, uh, after this uh, COVID, now the activities are uh, picking up. We could see the green shoots. When the capacities are increasing, naturally the MSME also will uh, grow. The capacities have started. We are able to see the uh, uh, green shoots on the increase in the capacity at a minimal level. Uh, for the large corporates. These MSMEs are basically dependent on the large corporates. They will be surrounding the uh, large corporates. And hence, the demand also is uh, slightly on uh, this one. And uh, when I talk of uh, about you said or you choose see, yes, we are being on uh, keeping in mind asset quality. We are uh, also choosing. Nevertheless, we are to open mind for taking up. So with that cautious approach, we could make a, a, a decent growth. Coming to the yield on advances, which you asked for uh, the RAM segment, uh, I have the data. The agriculture yield is 8.919%. MSME is 11.12%. The retail is 9.19%. And, and corporate, sir? Uh, that will be around 9.13 or 15. Got it, got it. And uh, the uh, uh, the small segment, which has actually grown uh, stupendously, like 37%, right? what would you attribute that growth? Is it uh, an impetus from the organization to push growth, or the segment itself has been growing? Segment is growing. When the segment is growing, and also the untapped market where we have the push, where we give the push, because the MSME is basically the trust area for our bank. So keeping that in mind, naturally there will be a push to increase that. Within that MSME, when we look into where it grows, we are able to see uh, good uh, potentials or good uh, growth in the small segment. So that has uh, increased. Got it, got it. And uh, how do you anticipate uh, growth uh, for uh, um, um, you know, for your bank for the coming year, uh, what is the range in terms of advances growth you expect? And especially our, uh, we are very strong with the MSME segment, and and uh, for some reason it is actually uh, uh, growing, uh, you know, slower pace, right? So keeping that in mind, what is the you know advances growth you expect for the full year? What the bank you uh, you have budgeted for? Yeah, for the bank as a whole, uh, as I said earlier, also the guidance to the street is that we will be growing in the range of 12 to 15 percent. That is what we have said. And we also uh, try to follow uh, that we promise less and deliver more. That is what we are trying. So we promise that it will be 12 to 15 percent. And uh, then coming within that, uh, how much will be the MSME? MSME will be in the range of around 10 to 12 percent, keeping in mind what we have grown now. While our uh, focus will be on that, wherever opportunities are there, we will be, and we will be having a cautious approach. Got it. So one uh, question related to the gold loans, right? Uh, I've seen that uh, across uh, the, uh, various private banks, regional banks uh, in particular, the gold loan book has almost uh, uh, come to 25% of the assets, right? 
now um, it seems to be a um, you know you don't need to deploy capital and uh, it in uh, and it also gets various benefits in terms of subvention or in terms of uh, becoming part of the priority sector now given that conceptually you think there is a there is a risk for the banking system if if any of these um, things get adjusted by the regulator uh, how do you think about this uh, um, because everyone has actually uh, gone uh, uh, strong on gold loans uh, and it actually brings a lot of benefits to the bank right so the, the your adjusted roa would be much higher in this thing and this even regulator would know right so how do you think about this from a risk mitigation point of view um I mean, i'm not talking only about your bank but in general what is your view hello so i would request you to unmute your line from your side please Sorry, my line is unmuted. I may request the management to unmute the line. Ladies and gentlemen, please wait while we reconnect the management. The management line has disconnected. <laughs> we have the line reconnected you can go ahead with the question uh, so did you hear my question or should i repeat the regarding the gold loan can you repeat uh, you are talking on the gold loan yeah so on the on the gold loan for all the private uh, sector banks uh, particularly regional private banks in south the gold loans have almost reached 25% of the asset book right and the gold loan is a very good product uh, from the bank point of view because you don't need to deploy capital there is you know it's a completely secured and also it gives uh, subvention benefits for the borrower and it's also agriculture net right now um, since it's become a, such a good product and it has actually grown a lot uh, do you think there may be any intervention from the regulator if so how how do how does bank would mitigate it right because you are making higher uh, roa adjusted and uh, you and it's like it gives lot of benefits to the bank right so um, what is the risk uh, uh, the bank system carries by having uh, uh, such a large uh, uh, you know gold loan book okay now now i will answer this not as a md of tmb uh, because you are asking about how the regulator will be doing for the industry Right? Yeah, and industry, and what is the? I mean, how banks have to think about it from a from a sensitivity, right? From a risk mitigation point of view, from a regulatory risk point of view. As far as the regulator is concerned, the regulator will be looking into from the aspect as to it should not be for uh, one the end use of the funds. I am talking on any credit. It should not be for the purpose like gambling and other things. So it should be eligible. It should be for the purpose which is eligible. By and large, the uh, banks, uh, particularly which is said as the private banks, that too in the southern part of the country, they give more mostly for the agriculture. So what is required is to ensure the end use of the funds that it is used for the agriculture if it is given for the agriculture. but there is also not uh, a restriction that it cannot be given for any other purpose it can be given for non agriculture also the other aspect which the regulator can look into is the regulator has given a soap that it doesn't have a requirement of a capital that is it is a eligible financial collateral under under basel 3 uh, guidelines when it comes as the eligible financial collateral there are methods of valuing the financial eligible financial collateral with the applicable hard cash now that comes the question of the ltv the ltv needs to be maintained if the ltv is maintained that can be there are methodology of calculating the hard cash on uh, the financial collateral eligible financial collateral gold is one of that uh, collateral 
there is a system of mark to market the frequency of mark to market so as a regulator what he will be looking into is whether these guidelines are scrupulously followed by the regulated entity if they are not followed by the regulated entity then he can say one that if i will not give you the benefit of the eligible financial collateral for your capital calculation purpose number 2 the regulatory guideline if there is for example the quality of the drug sludge becomes spurious then the secure secure advance may become unsecured advance the additional provisioning that will be required for the unsecured advance may have to be put so like this they can bring in the conditions so this is what i perceive uh, from the regulator but this jewel loan gold jewel loan is not a new product for the banking industry in india at least with my experience of more than four decades i can say that this product is in existence even before i entered the banking industry since i don't foresee much of uh, uh, the interference from the regulator uh, except on case to case basis where as a part of their supervision they do lot of exercise so i on case to case basis they may uh, if they find they may uh, advise uh, give the advice to the individual banks and as far as the tmb is concerned i can say that we have a robust system of valuation of the gold uh, marking to market almost on daily basis in the system itself so we do not foresee any such whatever i said uh, what the regulator can look into so these things we ourselves proactively are looking into following up with the ltv almost on daily basis so we don't foresee any issues on this thing thank you sorry to interrupt mr lakshmi narayan may we request that you return to the question queue for follow up questions as there are several participants waiting for their turn thank you our next question is from the line of mr arvind r from sundara alternates please go ahead uh hi sir uh, thank you so much for the opportunity uh, i see like uh, npa ratio had gone up sequentially and uh, uh i could also see like a uh, msf segment also contributing to in a big way uh, uh i'm like a uh, 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 question when you look at the chain chain uh in you know, msf segment as in as in grown up uh, that much but uh, still the npa has uh, gone up uh, i'm just trying to get an understanding like uh, what is going on in this uh, particular segment uh, uh where to which segment uh, you know which particular part of the segment uh, uh you know uh, we think you know, it can grow in the subsequent quarters that is my first question yeah. um sharavind the letter part of your question is not audible ah uh, okay sir uh, i don't know like which part of the question but i was asking uh, uh, like npa has gone up uh, sequentially uh, you know especially in uh, uh, in the msme segment that is one of our core segments and uh, you know and we haven't grown that much uh, uh, in the past year also like uh, it's only less than this percentage growth uh, i'm just trying to understand like uh, even though the growth is slow but uh, npa is going up so uh, that is what i'm trying to get concerned sir but also uh, one more thing on the same thing uh, uh, restructured advance is also uh, coming down like uh, is it also because of that like uh, as the restructured book is coming out uh, to the normal that is also contributing to npa or something okay uh i will answer as far as the npa going up uh, sequentially yes we see look into the number per se it has gone up uh, to 1.56 from 1.39 on a sequential quarter so the number six that it has gone up but one has to look into that what is the level of gross npa of the bank 1.56 is that 1.56 is a reasonable number in my opinion 1.56 is not a cause of concern for one quarter from 1.5 having said that to your next question is on the msme see the msme uh, are generally fragile and uh, that needs a uh, lot of uh, hand holding and other things if you look into the industry as a whole what is the msme npa and what is the msme npa of pmb 
you can see that there is a wide uh, difference. We, we are still able to maintain a better uh, quality. The restructured book is coming down, one, because uh, we are able to also have a recovery. I will give you the numbers of uh, the restructured book and also the NPAs uh, in that. Uh, one minute. The total restructured book uh, has come down from 786 crore to 703 crore as on 20th of June, of which the NPA has come down to 87.29 crore. So that indicates that it is not only that uh, the restructured book is coming down and then we also maintain the NPA of the restructured. So if I look into that, the NPA is also coming down. Having said, yes, this restructured book needs to be closely followed up, monitored, which we are uh, doing. Thus, we are able to maintain to a greater extent. During this quarter, there was a total slippage of 101 crore uh, in the NPA, of which the major uh, shock, uh, the biggest advance is just about 15 crore. That indicates that, uh, yes, uh, the others are uh, smaller. For your information, when I look into the slippage of 101 crore, the slippage in the MSME constitutes 60 crore against 63 crore in the previous quarter, sequential quarter. So that indicates that, yes, the slippage in the MSME is not alarming to that extent which we need to. Having said, the bank is fully cognizant of the bank is fully cognizant of uh, the stress uh, in the industry. More particularly, we will be focusing on the MSME, which needs extra tax. For your information, I can see that uh, the gross NPA ratio in 22-23 for the scheduled commercial banks in respect of MSME were touching 6.1%. Okay, sir. Thank you. I just one more question, if I can ask. Uh, 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 CASA ratio is also declining. Obviously, the rate is decreasing for almost all the banks uh, that I have seen till now. Uh, but uh, I'm just uh, um, trying to understand, like, uh, what do you see, like, in terms of, uh, you know, cost of deposits, uh, you know, shaping up in the, for the rest of the year? Like, uh, in, either in terms of uh, uh, CASA ratio coming down or even uh, rates for the term deposits, uh, you know, uh, still have to kept up uh, to keep the deposits within the bank. Well, uh, see, uh, when the uh, across the globe, the regulators started tightening and uh, increasing the uh, rate of interest to contain the inflation, the Indian regulators were also doing that, sucking the liquidity available in the market. This has ultimately translated into drying up of the surplus funds, which will normally be parked in the CASA. Since the CASA across the industry has come down substantially, as rightly observed by you, I can only add some indicative numbers, almost 200 bits on an average the CASA has come down for almost many of the banks, so we can see across the industry. Uh, we cannot be an uh, exception to that. Our CASA has come down against that of 200 bits, has come down by 100 bits. The, uh, supplement to this is the cost of deposit, as I said, when the, uh, the surplus funds are drying up, the demand for, for the cost, the cost increases. Uh, if you recollect uh, last year, almost all the banks, uh, there was a, I can say that the interest were increased uh, um, uh, substantially. The PMB waited for a longer time without increasing the cost. Then we also to have uh, uh, comparative competitive waves in the market. We increased our cost somewhere at the end, in the February, end of the last fiscal, in the month of February, I remember. We came out with a special product with a higher rate of interest. We mobilized the funds. After that, we stopped the product in the month of May. So this has resulted into the increased cost of deposits for all the banks and also to TMB.
Oh, sure, sir. I just wanted to understand like, if you think that there will be uh, any warrant, uh, requirement of increase in uh, de- deposit rates uh, further. I, I, I don't foresee the near future for my bank. Okay, Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Mr. Prabal from Ambit. Please go ahead. Hi, am I audible? Yeah, you are audible. Uh, so congratulations, Mr. Krishnan, uh, for the quota. Uh, Thank you. My first, uh, my first question is, sir, uh, can you highlight what is your liquidity coverage ratio? Yeah. One minute. Yeah. Yeah, I will give you during the course. Yeah. Uh, uh, second question would be how many employees are currently on the on the union model and uh, a supplement to that could be uh, if, if you can talk about the recent hiring that we have done at the senior level. See, I have a total employee strength of around 4,500 uh, nearly. Out of that 4,500, you said the union model. I uh, assume that you are referring to the wage structure of the IBA model. Am I right? Yes. Okay. If that being the case, uh, the employees whom I have recruited in the last two years, which will be very minimal in the number, maybe around uh, 400 or 500 uh, employees will be there. Barring them, uh, the rest of around 4,000 or in the IBA model. But uh, uh, we have our own settlement. It is not exactly the IBA. We are not a secretary to the IBA wage settlement. Uh, we have our own settlement with our employees union and the officer of association. Uh, now, having said that, we are also working on, uh, we, have, we are having the discussions with our uh, employees' representatives for those people also who have a different uh, package. Now, uh, if you uh, to answer your question, around 4,000 uh, people will be in the IBA model. And at the senior level, uh, uh, have you done any recent hiring from the market at senior head positions? Senior, senior head position. Yeah. So senior head position, I have hired my general manager. Credit uh, has been hired uh, less than a year back. My general manager in uh, information technology is hired about uh, a year and a half or so. Uh, my CFO, a senior person, is hired about uh, two years uh, back. So likewise, uh, we have a, a CTO who is also hired uh, from the market about uh, two to one half years back. So these are some of the people who we have hired at the senior level. Mm-hmm. Uh, sir, third question will be on growing loans. Prabhal, uh, you asked LCR. LCR is 209 percentage. 209 percentage. Uh, 209, is that right? 209. 209. Go so now. Okay. Uh, so then when are we planning to uh, utilize this? Because 200 percent plus LCR is quite high for us. So are we planning to utilize this to maybe cushion margins for us? Yeah, we, we, we are planning. If you say that, uh, see, uh, I gave the guidance of the business growth at a moderate level of 12 to 15 percent. And I also said that uh, we want to, I mean, we follow that we commit less and deliver more like that. Uh, uh, so we will be definitely uh, utilizing this in the period to come, if the increase in the advanced uh, business, we will be using that time. And uh, before that, um, Mr. Lakshmi Narayanan was asking about uh, top uh, 20 borrowers. Um, Mr. Lakshmi Narayanan can please note that it's around the, the exposure is around 3,200 uh, crore, approximately. Uh, that is the exposure, and the outstanding is uh, 1,700 crore. Sorry, Mr. Prabhal. Please go ahead. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, my my next question was on uh, was on jewel loan within the agricultural book. So if you can just you know uh, highlight uh, what is the nature of these loans, maybe in terms of ticket size, tenor, and the kind of repayment repayment design you have for these loans. 
Okay. The jewel loan can be broadly classified into two categories. Uh, that is what uh, mainly we give. One for the agriculture purpose and another is for the non-agriculture purpose. In, normally, the jewel loan for non-agriculture purpose is for a tenor of about one year and the agriculture goes to the agriculture fee side. We also have a cash, a key cash credit uh, type uh, backed with the jewel loan. The average ticket size of this jewel loan will be around uh, 1 to 2 lakhs, 1 lakh. And, uh, and my last question, sir, in your press release, uh, it says that we are opening uh, some loan processing centers. So if you can talk about uh, what kind of loans will be processed via these centers. And also if you can elaborate uh, uh, what was the process of, uh, what was the process earlier that, that bank used to follow? So I, your question is not very audible. We have plans to... Hello? My question is sir, on the loan processing centers. Loan processing Okay, fine. Fine. See, uh, I told you last time that we have taken up a business process engineering project. As a part of that, on the first phase, we have taken up the MSME front. And uh, this uh, project for the MSME is in the implementation uh, stage. Uh, one, as one of the first measures, what we did was we have established MSME hubs at four centers, Chennai, Coimbatore, Madurai, and Tutipuri. These four centers we have established. These MSME hubs are headed by very experienced seasoned executives who will be able to take a call quickly. These executives in the hubs are well assisted by trained credit analysts. This brings me an advantage of having a good quality processing. The third, we have also posted relationship managers at all these hubs. These relationship managers have the, their feet on the street. They, they are in contact with the potential and also the existing uh, customers to understand their needs, source the application, and then the due diligence are done by a separate team so that I ensure the quality of underwriting. This has been started very recently. I am able to see good traction, encouraging uh, results. Of course, as far as the number is concerned, it is too early to uh, tell the numbers. We will be watching for another two months or so. Probably, uh, if uh, 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 possible, I would love to meet every one of you, even in the mid of the quarter, where I will be able to share with you actually the numbers which has come out of these hubs. So just to clarify, uh, these hubs will be processing not just the uh, not just the loan uh, brought in by relationship managers, but also from the branches. What I have done is to begin with, uh, I have linked all these branches to the hub. Uh, that is in these centers, in these four centers. Whether anything you want will be implemented in a big organization or in a phased manner. So I have chosen these four uh, centers. The branches which are linked, uh, uh, situated in these centers are linked to these hubs. And there I have also given a cutoff that any advances above 50 lakhs to begin with will be processed by the hub. And below that will be processed, will be continued to be processed by the branches themselves. Over the period of time, with the establishment and the hub stabilizing itself, we will be uh, slowly bringing down the 50 lakhs uh, uh, cut off to a lower limit. And eventually, over a period of time, all the MSMEs will be brought to the hub. We are also in the process of having the uh, uh, digitized uh, loan originating system, which will ensure free and smooth flow of the applications the leads which are generated through the relationship managers, where it will be like a funnel, where it will be coming in, and the hub will be processing it. There will be a quick. We have uh, yesterday, if I'm right, the purchase order for the procurement of the loan originating system, one of uh, the state-of-the-art loan originating system available in the country. 
we have entered into an agreement with the service provider yesterday we gave the uh, purchase order hope that we will be able to uh, finalize and in uh, roll over it as quickly as possible which will enable my customers to have a good uh, digital experience also thank you before we take the next question a reminder to all participants that you may press star and one to ask a question our next question is from the line of sonal minas from prescient cap investment advisors llp please go ahead hi sir this is sonal uh, am i audible yeah good morning mr sonal how are you all well sir how are you hope all is well thank, thank you good sir i had a bookkeeping question just wanted to understand your uh, size of your gold bond portfolio is ltv and its financial fees are uh, around about figures you could disclose just to understand how large the gold portfolio is just uh, get details okay. on that my size of gold bond portfolio is around 10200 to 10500 crore uh, approximately okay. right and it consists of around 9 lakh accounts uh, approximately okay. the ltv ratio is maintained at uh, 85 85% the 15% is the margin so ltv is maintained at 85% as i was uh, responding to earlier to mr ashwin narayan that the bank has a good system of marking to market almost on a daily basis across all the branches important and the tonnage would be roughly how much just curious how much more do you be managing Hello. Clear. Not clear. You, you are not audible. Uh, Mr. Sir, I was asking how much you to use your handset for optimum audio quality. Thank you. Sure. Sure. Uh, I was just asking what would be the tonnage of the gold loan portfolio, sir. What would be this? the the tonnage? Tonnage. Tonnage. Uh, I I don't have right now. Okay. It is such as I don't have the. Tonnage of the gold. <laughs> no, 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 wait. So I had a follow-on question on the MSME sector because I think in the last call we were in, I did ask you about the quality of uh, the proposals that you are getting, and I think uh, you did mention that the quality both in Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Karnataka region seems to be healthy. But uh, right now, from what I am hearing from uh, the callers, the discussion with the callers earlier. seems like uh, the msme portfolio uh, you are a little cautious on uh, uh, reviewing uh, the portfolio that are coming to you so just wanted to understand uh, is there a change what has happened uh, maybe i'm getting it wrong just trying to understand uh, uh, the quality of the msme proposals that you're getting across the three four states you're dominant in no i uh, probably uh, give uh, more clarity on uh, what i said i didn't said that uh, there is a concern or anything like that rather i was telling that out of the total slippage if i look into for uh, uh, few one which amounted to around 101 crore um, mm -hmm. my msme normally yes msme or fragile and i have large exposure so uh, mm -hmm. the are definitely the slippage portion also will be little higher but when i compare this slippage with the previous quarter sequentially Mm -hmm. Sequentially, in the last quarter, that is Q4 of the last year, the slippage in the MSME was 63 crore, and during the Q1, the slippage is 60 crore, which indicates that, by and large, we are maintaining the same quality. Rather, marginally, it has improved because the slippage has come down from 63 to 60. So, uh, I still stand back to the quality what we get. Of course. when i say the quality what we get we have to do the due diligence as a lender we are cautious we will be doing the due diligence and we will be taking a good uh, quality uh, book understand and with more centralization in technology and the consulting fees you're talking about yes. uh, the quality of diligence the comparison of proposals even access to cash flows of these companies to understand uh, the quality of the data that has been submitted will that all improve over time just just this is more like uh, thinking uh, 
to understand uh, how is uh, the msme book uh, going to be in the next one or two years basically uh, in the next one or two years i expect a good improvement in msme book of my bank uh, the stress ratio coming down uh, reasonably well uh, in the next one or two years as you rightly observed with the centralization putting in the ruling chain the quality of the assessment the underwriting the monitoring the lot of tools are available we will be able to ring fence the cash flows with all those things i am sure that the quality will improve reasonably well in the next one to two years I understand this thanks a lot for answering my questions sir have a nice day thank you thank you our next question is from the line of saket kapoor from kapoor and co please go ahead ji namaskar sir and thank you for this opportunity sir firstly if you could give us some granular details of uh, the the increase in the treasury income for this quarter and uh, uh, i think so this this supported this line item supported our numbers for the quarter and also what explains the reduction in the uh, profit for the retail banking segment these two uh, segment results the answer is the treasury income is concerned my interest income has uh, gone up right uh, with the investments going up and also the rate of interest coming up on the year on year it has uh, gone up so that is one and uh, but my profit on sale of investments is almost uh, flat still the market is need to get up to get, get me a profit so that is the main reason for uh, this and uh, last year uh, you know the market was bad which necessitated a mark to market uh, positioning uh, which uh, was uh, additional burden last uh, uh, q1 which is not there this time hope that in the now it has turned there is no mark to market in the coming period of this fiscal maybe by q3 or q4 i expect that the market will uh, turn positive will be able to get profits on the thing you know so when when we are comparing your treasury income on a year on year basis it is flat but on a q on q basis it has moved up significantly so just to understand the nature of the same uh, what factors uh, Uh, will contribute to it, and what should be its trajectory? Well, are you in a position to comment on the same? And on the retail banking segment, we have seen a decline uh, Q on Q. Uh, if you could explain uh, the same answer, also, uh, if you could give us some uh, trajectory of what the NIMS for the year would likely to be, uh, what what should we look in terms of the ROA and uh, what what should be the uh, our the provision uh, as per the book so the we yeah. were picking up on the segment report on the things or on that am i right yes sir from the segmented portion okay i will request my cfo to be in touch with you and he will give the necessary details on the break up of uh, this uh, sequential quarter comparison both on the treasury and also the retail banking coming to what will be the guidance on the return on assets i said that my return on assets the guidance given is in the range of 1.75% to 2 which we will be maintaining the nim as far as the nim is concerned it will be 4 plus i'll join the queue again i i request the moderator to just send me back 2 3% and i'll just join in two minutes yeah yeah most welcome mr sakit yeah moderator please aap mujhe teen logo ke piche kar dijiye i'll join again thank you sir our next question is from the line of jay mundra from icici securities please go ahead yeah hi sir uh, good morning and thanks for the opportunity very good morning mr jay mundra how are you i am good sir how are you fine fine great yeah. great sir uh, <coughs> my first question is about some margin right so you know not this quarter you know of course they have declined but even from a why why perspective or the entire cycle perspective we have seen margins which have not improved 
uh, actually they have deteriorated uh, if you look at yields then they have been more or less range bound uh, like uh, in the slide that you have given that the yields on yoy basis they were 9.48 and then they have improved to 9.82 but so similar has been the pressure on cost of deposits and uh, cost of funds um, so margins have been more or less uh, stagnated uh, whereas all other banks in the last 3 to 4 quarters have seen significant rise in the net interest margin so what is the reasons for you know limited margin expansion at the same time our growth has also been uh, you know more or less normalized growth so when we are uh, you know cautious on growth uh, the margins have been actually on a downhill so wanted to understand what is the reason okay uh, mr madra if you look into today across the i mean the banking industry itself there is a pressure on the cost of deposits <coughs> deposit costs have substantially gone up for every bank accordingly for us also it has gone up so it is a temporary phenomena i expect that this will ease out uh, in the next quarter or so it will be coming down as i was explaining earlier to the earlier speaker uh last year we postponed increasing the uh, deposit rate and we increased it only at the peak end of the last fiscal that is in the month of february now that full impact has come on the q1 that is why it looks that the cost has gone up normally in banks particularly in pmb i can say that the q1 will be a uh, dull lull Uh, on the this one for various reason one such will be on the people movement there will be large scale transfers replacement other things so normally there will be a this is a lull period nevertheless uh, if you look into the growth has been moderate i will say that around 10% and percent also that was growth is around 10.26 percentage with that it has now my nim is uh, for i uh, feel that yes it will is likely to go up in the coming uh, quarters that is what uh, i expect so keeping that in mind only we have given the guidance of 4 plus and uh, you will definitely agree with me that the yeah, nim of 4 is reasonably a good nim uh, when we compare the industry in the country there are few tailings right no no doubt sir the nim or at 4% is very healthy what i was trying to understand is uh, that uh, it has not improved to the extent of what other banks have seen improvement uh, in fact it has declined uh, on yoy basis and last two three quarters it has been declining on a sequential basis uh, are you sensing some let us say competition more competition when you were to increase your yield on advances or you think the competitive intensity is same as let's say last 12 months has not changed <laughs> no there is uh, increased uh, competition which cannot be uh, refuted by anyone uh so that is also one of the reasons that when that comes then we have to and we take a very very calculated uh, steps so we have a good alco which deliberates on that and i hope that this 4% is likely to go up in the coming period right okay and sir you said that from now onwards the margin should be more or less stabilized here right at 4% uh, near about is that the right understanding yeah that, that is the right understanding margin is uh, i don't expect to go down rather it may be marginally going up from now onwards it should move northward so why would that be i mean is that the cost of deposits have retraced almost to the extent Uh, that you know cost of deposit should not rise or how no cost of replacing of the cost of i mean the deposits have taken place as far as my bank is concerned almost and uh, in the near future of course it's the alcos uh, call 
uh, I don't expect that the rate will be increasing in the uh, deposit bank. So I have the, the Alco had their planning and uh, whatever we were to mobilize, we have mobilized. We discontinued that uh, product which was having the higher rate of interest. So I hope with all these things in back, uh, I feel that uh, going forward, my margin will be improving uh, steadily. Right. And sir, if you have the breakup of your loan book by MCLR, EBLR, uh, and working capital and term loan, uh, I mean, these two cuts, that A1 by benchmark, as to how much is MCLR, how much is the EBLR, T-bills, etc. And the second would be how much is working capital loan and how much is term loan. The, as far as the uh, MCLR and EBLR is concerned, uh, it is almost 50 50, or uh, it may be something like 48 52. We just discuss our kind. Yes. So, not uh, much. So, we can say 50 50 will be the uh, MPLR and uh, MPLR. As far as the working capital and term loan is concerned, I will request our people to give you the uh, exact uh, numbers. <laughs> Normally, there is a lag of about three months in affecting the three to six months, I can say, in. Uh, affecting the increase in the policy rates. So hope that uh, with all those things, uh, what I said, that uh, the, I also expect that the regulator will not be increasing the rates further.